embark upon this new adventure. We give you thanks for each person participating in this cross-border study, for the wisdom that each one has to bring to our conversation. Help us to know that this time and space is one that is safe and free. For each one to ask questions and to share ideas, be with us as we engage together. And as our Canadian sisters and brothers have just celebrated Thanksgiving, as we in the States look forward to Thanksgiving in the next several weeks, we are grateful this night, O oh God, for this opportunity to be the body of Christ in the world. Across borders and across difference, draw us together into one body. This we pray in your holy name. Amen. 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 Well, thank you so much for that, Lord. It was just a wonderful starting to our time together. So, uh, sorry that we had our technical problems. Everything was still set up the same as when we tested it. But, of course, every now and then, uh, Murphy's Law takes over from the Holy Spirit. And uh, we, we sort of end up in those positions. So, uh, wonderful to be together as a group in two nations. Um, now, um, we had talked a little bit about the process on, on perhaps having some introductions tonight and uh, some initial thoughts, perhaps um, responses to some of the Christian groups that um, um, are, are chapter, chapter headings, headings. Uh, maybe uh, even a little bit about how things may have changed in your Christian journey, if there are particular Christian words that used to mean a lot more to you than they do now, or Christian words that mean more to you now than then, or if there's something that has always been kind of a key word for you, but it may have changed in meaning over time. So um, I, don't, I don't know, would it work to kind of go back and forth between the borders here, or uh, what, what might work from your side? I think uh, starting with introductions, I think, is right. I don't know about back and forth if that would be. Will we be able to handle that? Even no. They do their. Why don't we do each each side of introductions? So why don't you folks introduce yourselves first, uh, but also tell us about the congregation in Canmore, as well, please. Okay. okay. All right. Well, um, you want to just go around. And I'll kind of get out of the way. Oh, I've got I've got a group of shy Canadians with me, so they won't want me to start off by talking about a couple of the congregations. So, uh, well, we are a, uh, a small, vibrant congregation in the Rocky Mountains uh, of Alberta. So any of you that know where Banff is, we are just uh, a little bit east of there. And uh, the congregation that, or the, the church building that we worship in is 127 years old now. Um, and so we, we're happy to celebrate its 125th anniversary a couple of years ago. But we really have a... a a mission focus that increasingly is reaching into the community and some of those are sort of standard um, church-based programs but other ones are not so much. For example, we have a healing prayer group uh, where people come and have, uh, in essence laying on a pen uh, here at the congregation and a lot of the folks that come for that one are not church folks, they're folks from the community. Uh, we have an outreach with young adults that is very non-traditional in its focus, where we see them as a disadvantaged group in our community, and um, that they need to find a voice. So we have a staff person that works with them. We are very close to an Indian reserve. And, uh, and so we have First Nation uh, folks that are, are growing our relationship with them. Um, so there's all these different kinds of connections that we have that I think are going to move us into the future. Um, in addition to that, we have a group that is looking actively at uh, lesbian and gay inclusion in the church. And, uh, and so we are figuring out just how that would look for uh, a Christian community to, uh, to be at the center of that kind of wellness. So uh, yeah, that's, that's sort of us. 
Uh, as I mentioned, there are a small church. The actual church itself seats 80. Uh, and on a Sunday, we uh, will often get between 65 and about 75. So it's a nice, full experience of worship. Um, great acoustics in the room. People just love to sing. And uh, a choir that sometimes is a solid third of the congregation. So, uh, and anything else I think I should share about who we are? I guess we're a congregation of the United Church of Canada, which is in full communion with the United Church of Christ. So it's wonderful to be able to build this kind of connection with you folks. So I'll uh, I'll pass things along and yeah, my my name is Greg. <coughs> A little better. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hi, my name is Joy, and uh, myself and my husband, we will meet in a minute. We've been in Canmore about five years, and we came from Calgary, which is a major city just an hour away. Um, so by way of introduction relating to the book, I think that the word that jumped out to me that uh, was significant in my growing up is salvation. And a lot of the words, of course, connect to that. But how Ward talks about salvation and the heaven and hell framework was definitely uh, where I was coming from growing up. Looking at those words now, I think for me, one that jumped out was beyond literalism, which would be what's significant to me. And the word that's not up there but connected is a lot of what Ward writes about is justice. to Joy. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you for the Canadian play. We appreciate that gesture. It's very nice of you. Um, someone here is responsible for getting an American play here for next week. Um, so uh, I think all I'd like to say uh, is that uh, Joy and I our background is actually the Lutheran Church, so when we moved to Canmore, we joined this church. So, um, but we really enjoyed it. Um, I think uh, in, in lots of ways. So I, I don't think I'll comment on the book so much. I'll wait till maybe next week on that. So if you can see me, just. Over a bit. Yeah, you're good. Good to see you. My name is uh, Gus Campbell. I've been in uh, Canmore for four years now. Uh, this church congregation is a uh, truly fantastic part of uh, my life here in Canmore. The people here are wonderful. Uh, my background would be very uh, in the church uh, spectrum, very liberal, uh, and uh, really find a wonderful home here. In Anyway, the United Church straightened out that issue. And, but not totally, not totally. At any rate, I think the many book studies in Calgary, there are several of them. Uh, there's one that's been going for 24 book studies. It's by the university. Pardon me, don't talk. Good evening. Uh, I'm Dave Somerville, and uh, I'm originally from Ontario, so closer to where you are. I've been in Canmore for about 20 years now. Uh, I grew up in the United Church of Canada in Ontario. Our family was very active, and like many people, I moved across the country. I came up to the mountains out west about 20 years ago, and I got away from being part of an organized uh, religious community. So I just started coming back to the church in April, and uh, it's, it's a wonderful congregation that we have here, really welcome, wonderful people, and very, very pleased to be here. So, and yeah, I look forward to talking about the book with you the next few weeks. So, thank you. Schools are late. Right. 
My name is John Snowy, and this church has just been so welcoming. The members and our minister, it has been really a change in our lives, and it is just a blessed place to be. <clears throat> my name is Heather Snowy, and um, I feel much as my husband feels. Um, it's a church where everyone is welcome, no matter where they are in their spiritual journey. And I think we can all agree that as we grow in every other facet of our lives, our spiritual lives evolve and change as we grow. It's not static. And um, it's wonderful to be able to share some ideas and um, how we uh, view our spiritual nature. And um, we'll get to know each other better as time goes on. And I'll pass it on to the next lady. Here we are. My name is Cindy Gascoigne. I've been in Canmore for almost three years now. I came here with my husband, uh, who needed care, and has a lovely care home here. He passed away about three months ago, and this church has been so supportive of me. They feel like my family. My background, uh, I'm from Holland originally. My background is Christian Reformed, very strict, very Calvinistic. Then I wasn't anybody for a while, and then we moved to Winnipeg, which is north of North Dakota, and north of Winnipeg to a small town. And there was an ecumenical church, where United, Presbyterian, um, Anglican, and Mennonite uh, all worshiped together in a school. And they've been doing this for 50 plus years. So I'm very much an ecumenical person. And this church feels very similar to what I was used to. Uh, people are very welcoming. Anybody can come here. Uh, I just feel very at home here. And this Bible study is, is, is really something that I need, I think. I still struggle with some of the really strict concept from my youth. Um, I know I want to want to leave them, but sometimes I have trouble with that. So I'm hoping this book will help me. My name is Linda Boland, and I have lived in Canmore for 32 years now. Um, I was raised up to the age of 12. United Church in Winnipeg, Manitoba, in the prairies, and then went off to explore life, and I have moved to Canmore and settled in this beautiful church, as peaceful as everyone is saying, and I feel very fortunate. I look forward to conversing with you all. Thank you. Hello. My name is Margaret, and I've been here since uh, 1994. I'm originally from Montreal. I grew up in northern Quebec and was raised Catholic. Um, I was saying earlier that uh, I'm really a Unitarian Universalist at heart, but have found such a welcoming congregation here, and really it's now my spiritual home. And like Linda said, I really look forward to meeting all of you. Okay, so at this point, uh, it would be really nice to meet your two congregations because we realize that uh, we're, we're all from one, one congregation, but there's two congregations there. So if you wouldn't mind telling us a bit about your individual congregations and and then sort of let us know which one you're from and, uh, and uh, a little bit about yourselves. It's lovely to meet you. I am Chris Ross and I'm the pastor here at St. Peter's United Church of Christ in Kiel, which is where our location is, where we're broadcasting from. Uh, uh, St. Peter's was originally a German Reformed congregation founded in 1864, uh, which that's one of the strands that combined to form the United Church of Christ eventually in the 50s. Uh, our congregation numbers somewhere just over 500 on the rolls. I would say we get about 100 on a Sunday, is that right? Okay, about 100 on a Sunday. Um, I've been here for only two years, so I'm still kind of a new kid on the block in Kiel.
lifelong member here. Uh, I'm building a ground sky here, so for whatever that's worth. <laughs> right. I'm Terry Thiessen. I'm not sure I'm on camera, but that's okay. Um, I'm also a member here at St. Peter's. I uh, have lived in McHugh, the Holstein area, um, my entire life. I'm uh, Larry Smith. I'm glad to see there's uh, someone from the Netherlands there. I went to visit the Netherlands two years ago and really enjoyed it. I've been in Kiel for many, many years. I was, I was raised uh, in Lutheran, and we have a sign inside of Kiel that says Kiel, Wisconsin, where you're among friends. It's a very true year. Hi, I'm Dennis Larry. Um, I've been a longtime member of United Church of Christ as long as Dave. Uh, Dave and I were here since 1864, I think. <laughs> 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 but, uh, We've, been, uh, we've seen all the pastors that have gone through the church over the years. We've seen the growing of the church and, and seen it it's, as it's gone through its stages in life, the changes it's gone through. So this is a, a new challenge, and this will be a neat thing to, to have with the group to, to put these two churches kind of combined together and, and, and make them uh, uh, think together, and maybe we can do a road trip because I'm just newly retired. So. <laughs> the church, the con 
Bill Caste, retired United Church of Christ pastor, always, except for the first couple of years, uh, was always in rural areas, sometimes a five-point church uh, charge, sometimes three, and recently retired after 28 years at two points, so I'm familiar with rural area. Uh, member at Emmanuel, uh, recently joined there with my wife. Um, anyway, one word I want to look into, and I didn't see it in the book, is evangelical. Okay, what that means, what uh, Professor Board wants that to mean, because, um, well, there's a lot of I, a lot of mis uh, use of that word. I believe in our current day. Have been to Canada several times. Most recently, Vancouver. Uh, a cousin uh, lived in northern Vermont, and uh, his wife was an English-speaking per, uh, English person from Quebec. So have been in several places in Ontario. Good to be, meet all of you. We have one more person that, that Greg has seen, and I don't know if I can get this other person to come around the other side, our, our, over here, John. our tech guy. So you should know he's listening in. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm John. I'm the guy behind the scenes um, handling our Skype side and tech issues. And also, um, I'm going to be putting this up on YouTube, so if anybody wants to review these chats, uh, they will be available online in the cloud. All right, that's all I have to say. Thanks, John. We're, we're getting that, that sort of rumbling, fading in and out of uh, volume. Okay. So we heard some of you really well and some of you not so well. You may have had that with us as well. But uh, just, just if there's uh, any of that sort of uh, the, the setting where it's trying to seek a different volume, um, yeah, it, it, it's not been working all that well on this side. Okay. But having said that, I think we got the gist from pretty much every one and, and uh, a sense of, of where you're from. Something that I noticed was uh, the number of you that have been part of your congregations for life or for a, a, a long time. And that's one of the things that is very different than Canmore that I didn't mention earlier. Um, Canmore for years was a little tiny. And then when the 1980 Olympics came to Calgary, uh, we became a tourist community, uh, which is a good thing because in 1979, the line had closed out here, the coal line. And so there are a few families connected with the Copper Keys that would have been um, lifelong folks, or minors, kids, or something like that, but that is maybe 10% of our congregation. Most folks come here um, um, in order to take advantage of, of the, the very active things you can do here and the, the beautiful part of the world that this is. So uh, as you've heard going around, there's, there's a, lot, a lot of folks here who have been here a great long time. Uh, so that's one of the differences that I, I heard between our group.
and whether we're going to try to cover the whole book together or if we're going to pick five or six key topics. Um, and uh, that, that might be something we do with our intellectual groups, um, maybe even after we sign off and I just spend a few minutes doing some initial thinking about that. Um, those might change a little bit after we read the first two chapters, because they're quite full. Um, the, the first chapter introduces a lot of the themes of the book, right. and then the second one is quite focused as well. We might even want much more than one session on those, but uh, yeah, to start with, I think that probably as far as we go on the process. Okay. Okay. Yeah, are, are there any questions that anyone has that, that we should do while we're together? Um, we, we had a question. Uh, is there any uh, Moravian connection with any of, of you or your uh, Moravian? Moravian? Is there any Moravian connection with anyone? Okay. Okay. Um, any other? How long have you been here? Oh, okay. Um, have, have you been hearing us okay, or is that going to be an ongoing issue for us? Uh, we we're getting some feedback, but I think we're hearing most of what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it, it could just be a distance from the mic thing that we need right. to kind of maintain it. And so, kind of stepping forward to the mic, whatever, when, when we're speaking or for, for how it breaks amplifies for you. Here that are so beautiful at this 
time of year, they don't lose their needles, but they change color. Oh, right. So, uh, yeah. but, yeah. Oh, I guess we'll do a bench. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Well, anything else before we sign off? Or? I don't think so. Does this time work well for you? Does the time? I think so. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I, think, I think we can, yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out one way or okay. another. But we'll figure out just when when we're going to eat and that sort of thing, and and hopefully we'll get our sound figured out a little better than that. But um, we'll we'll figure out some of those back off plans if we ever needed to go to just a conference call or something. We could perhaps adapt to. Okay. Um, but uh, we'll email some of those details. Right. 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 Sounds good. Um, well, if if I could close this with a blessing, then. Um, Please. So. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us and go with us in our lives, in our congregations, in our nations, until we meet again. May Christ be with you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank Let's you so you. much. Bye. Bye. Bye.